Hello everyone, welcome to Talking Talks with Serena from Bacha, the reading room and cafe. Uh, before we start, uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Denise and I'm the host for today's session. Uh, we have a few guidelines for today's uh, Talking Talks. So number one, please stay muted and turn off your camera because we are recording it. So it's only going to be Serena and I talking for today's session. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the chat. We uh, please also use respectful languages when you ask your questions as well. So keep in mind of these three uh, guidelines as we go on with this session. Uh, so welcome again to Talkie Talks. Uh, so I think I see someone else trying to join in. Yeah, okay. Um, so before we start, I'm just gonna just introduce what Talkie Talks is, especially for those who is the first time coming to Talkie Talks. So Talkie Talks is a a series of sharing session where we invite small and local uh, business owners to share about their motivation to start a business and also the story of their entrepreneurial journey and to find out more about how they started their own business. And this is brought to you by RYSE or RISE. We are a program that equips young people about entrepreneurship skills, entrepreneurship knowledge, so that they may one day start their own business and have entrepreneurship as a viable career option. Uh, we also are proudly supported by City Foundation. And we believe that entrepreneurship is not only for big tech companies, big tech startups, but actually there are also the small and mighty businesses just like Bacha. And we really aim to showcase these lovely stories about small and local businesses that are staying strong and keep on chasing their dreams even during this time. So welcome Serena from Bacha. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're really glad to have you here. So I think uh, before I ask Serena out my questions, we have an agenda for today's session. So first off, we have a welcoming where we, uh, of course, ask Serena to talk about her business, introduce it a, a little bit, especially for those who have not heard of Pacha before. We have also a few questions for her about her story behind her business and also challenges that she probably faced during the past uh, when she first started and also even now and then thirdly we have the Q&A session where your questions will be answered the audience so if you have submitted any questions and or you have any type if you type any questions in the chat you will ask them during the Q&A session and then lastly we have two short announcements one is about talk the next talk it talks and then the other announcement is about rise online which is a program that rise is running right now so I think we have further ado. Um, Serena, can you introduce yourself and a little bit about Bacha? Um, hi. So basically, um, I'm Serena. Um, I used to be a full-time lawyer. Um, but in 2015, I decided to open up a bookstore in a small town called Temerlo. I'm not sure if most of you have heard of the small town called Temerlo in Pahang. It's uh, by the river and population is um, definitely not like KL. So um, the bookstore that I have is actually a small bookstore and a shop lot. Um, it's, um, we sell not just uh, new books. We are definitely not your MPH or your Kinokuniya. Definitely not that. We're an independent bookstore. Um, we are selling new books, um, secondhand books. Um, we also sell antiquarian so that um, we, we are able to cover uh, for different types of um, readers. At the same time, um, in the bookstore, I actually decided to have a free reading section. Um, this was aimed to help those in the Merlot um, who felt that they didn't have enough resources to buy books, to just come in, um, step in, and just read any book that there is um, within the free reading section. The free reading section, um, the books there, I actually took some of my own. Um, and there are a lot of friends in KL um, who actually wanted to clear their the bookshelves to give more space for others or they just wanted to renovate their house and they decided to give away all their books to my bookstore just for this free reading section 
um, and that is at the back of the bookstore um, where there is a section for children to play and there is also a section for other readers to sit down and read their books. Uh, at the same time, we have a little, little cafe, um, not, not for heavy food and all st those stuff, just like cakes, um, drinks, coffee, so that if you feel the hunger pangs coming while you're reading, uh, so you have something there to munch, so that's that. Um, so I would say this was my idea of a humble bookstore in a little town. Could you, uh, that's share, that's so what you can call it. Uh, sorry. Um, could you share like, what is antiquarian? Like, yes. Wait, um, I can't hear you. Can you say that again? Sorry, Serena. Um, my question was, can you explain what is, you mentioned antiquarian books? Antiquarian, yeah. Antiquarian books are those books which are rare, they're old, and uh, most of them are out of print. They could be... Um, something more than 20, 20 years old, some 100 years old. Um, basically, these are also collectors, what we call collectors item. They could be first editions. Um, they could be books which are you know, totally out of the market. Mm. Um, usually, a, a, an antiquary book will look quite old. And... Um, there would be a market for this antiquarian books amongst older people usually, <laughs> older people. But I can see that there are now younger people who try to collect um, these kind of uh, rare books. So that's what we have as well. Thank you for sharing. Um, my next question would be, could you share like what inspired you to start the business uh, in 2015? Obviously you, come, you are a lawyer, and then suddenly you wanted to start a bookstore. Like, could you share like the story of how you decided I want to own a, your own bookstore? Well, I guess um, like most bookstore owners, they love to read. And um, I used to love to read um, on a tree when I was younger, <laughs> you know, and that was where I, I could actually sit down without being bothered by anyone. So during those days, you don't have your little library and all that. So I actually went up a um, guava tree <laughs> where, where I could find a nice spot for me every day to go up and read my books. Then when I was, um, I think I was around standard three or something like that, my mom brought me to the first um, exhibition, book exhibition event in KL um, where I bought perhaps my first Enid Blyton. Have you heard of Annie Blyton books? Yes, yeah? yes, I love Annie Blyton. So, and after that, yeah, then the, after that, it was just nonstop. Um, soon after that, um, around 1979, I had to follow my parents to move to Tamerlo. And, um, and I couldn't find books in the, in the shops and all that. Mm. But the school library, um, surprisingly, had lots of English books which nobody touched because at that time nobody read English books in this small town so it was me and another friend um, we actually went through the we didn't need to hide any books yeah because nobody wanted them <laughs> we just took turns reading all the books in the in the library um, until to a point I decided that oh I have to bring some home and I didn't I didn't return it early enough until I was fine so much, you know, that my, my, my late father was pretty upset that he had to pay so much, so much fine for all the books that I didn't return in on time. Um, then in school, in, in um, secondary school, things were the same. When I went to study in England, um, I went to a few antiquarian books, uh, bookstores in Oxford. Um, that's how I started slowly um, collecting. Mm. And then um, when I was doing some paper in Australia, that to, and after that, wherever I, I travel, uh, the first destination would be a bookstore. And from there, I could see that there were different types of bookstore, bookstores everywhere around the world, which would attract me towards, you know, the books and um, all those, um, the ambiance in all those bookstores um, 
food. We'll, we'll have some nice spot for you to actually sit down and read. Um, even if you feel that it's not, um, it's not the best, but there will be a spot in the bookstore that you can find cozy enough for you to sit down and read. So for me, a bookstore was not just a place to buy a book and just run off. Mm. Uh, for me, a bookstore was a place to actually find a book, sit down, find a cozy spot, read, and, and then buy it. <laughs> and then buy it because you want to have it. You want to own it. Just in case you want to read it again. I'm that sort of person who would like to read a book again and again. So when I... Um, uh, in 2015, mm. I thought about what is it that I would like to to do for the community that, that came first. Mm. And the community that uh, I was living in did not really read. Uh, Timurlo in those days was a reader's haven. Those days in the, you know, um, before, before Merdeka perhaps. But uh, things deteriorated. You see every all the kids uh, going around with gadgets, um, riding little motorbikes, although they were not of the age yet. And so I decided, like, um, let's have this place. I didn't really bother much, to be honest, about the profit. I just wanted a spot where everyone can be pulled in to sit down mm. and not just read books, but discuss, enjoy arts, talk about arts, um, and discover all the things um, that were part of our tradition. Mm. And let's just do this together so that we're not sucked into the uh, rush you know, of the modern world. Um, so I decided, like, let's have a place like that. Uh, when I wanted to have this bookstore, I decided that what, what did I hate about bookstores you know, most? What was it? And it was, and I thought about it, I didn't like bookstores which didn't have carpets. And you know why? Oh. Because I didn't like the, to hear footsteps when I was reading. <laughs> so, so then that was my main thing. I needed to have carpets. And the person who helped me renovate was like, um, but why would you want that? It's not, um, it's not cheap to have it for the whole bookstore, you know, and you might have to replace it every now and then. So I decided, no, it's okay. I'll invest in something a bit more because I really dislike listening to people, you know, the, the shoes, the sound of shoes, you know, in bookstores. I really hated that. So um, that's what I invested in. And then came the concept of um, the bookstore, which I decided, like, um, let's look for a certain type of wood. Mm. And uh, I went for Berlian, which... Um, was imported from Sarawak. Uh, that's where you came from, right? <laughs> so, um, and so the, the person who helped me renovate was kind enough to actually listen to what I wanted. And um, instead of having the usual cabinets, you know, straight cut ones, we went for pipes and long um, wooden planks, uh, we went to a few um, places to look for all this kind of wood and put it together. And that's what I have now, a little bookstore, um, which I hope uh, is cozy enough for some people to sit down and read. Not everyone. I know yeah. you can't please anyone, everyone, but yeah. so I admire um, you find hopefully the, readers will love yeah. it. You found, you found a problem or in a way a need where people need a place, a quiet place. And you know what you usually don't like in a bookstore and then you included in also i'm very curious yeah. like how you like you were in law before like where where yes. you always uh, do you ever um, always have that idea of i want to own a bookstore one day before you even oh, start yes. law or it's a it's a romantic idea if you think about it i when i think uh, when i talk to lots of my book reading friends and they always tell me you opened a bookstore that's what i've always wanted you know, so everyone was telling me that. So I said, like, why reader. didn't you? Yeah, because it's a romantic idea with book readers. People who really yeah. love books, they have that romantic idea about having a bookstore, which looks like Shakespeare and Co. in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> you I'm know, not, I'm sure might not, not have the resources. Very lovely, lovely. I'm sure that, yeah. is, is there, was there any, like, challenges when you first started in Tamala? Of course, of course. Well, 
my challenges, I think, would be different from the challenges of uh, other bookstores in KL because I'm in the Merlo. I'm not in mm. KL. I'm not in PG. I'm not in the big cities, right? And suddenly, I'm bringing in books from um, Japan. I have Japanese books. Um, and I have um, a lot of English books. I have a lot of English books. And as I told you, not many people in Temulo were reading English books, right? So there were a lot of people who came in. They, they didn't dare to come in uh, because it's all glass and they thought that you need to have a membership to come in. Mm -hmm. So we had to lure them to come in and they just stood outside staring from outside. And then when they came in, they all thought that they had to take off their shoes. So I said, that. no, 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 well, your shoes just walk in and everyone was scared to touch things. Um, which I felt like, why? In KL, this would be normal, right? But um, just because they, they couldn't imagine something like that would be in Temerlo. So it was a bit uh, difficult at the start. And some parents came in and they looked around and with a, some kind of angry look and said, Where's the stationery section? <laughs> and we said, like, we're just a bookstore. We're not selling stationery. And they're like, so I can't photostat here. <laughs> so and we go like, and we went like, um, no, we don't do that. We just sell books, and um, you know, we sell books and we have a cafe. That's it. Mm. And some of them just went off in a half. And some people came in and said like, why are there so many English books? And I said, like, better for you, for your children to learn, you know, now they can read now. And they just looked at me like, um, what's going on? You know, and they just left. So this was happening for, for like a month. And after that, it just slowly sunk in that it, this is what we are selling and this is what we're having. Um, and then what I did was I invited um, an artist called Emila Yusuf. I'm not sure if you've heard of her, Emila Yusuf. Okay, so she, I actually, because she's from Pahang, so I asked her a favor. So I said, like, um, would you like to come to the bookstore and, um, you know, just show some kids your drawings and, you know, just maybe just go through with them. And she said, why not? You know, so she came in and I had like around 20 kids suddenly registered. So all the parents knew about her. So to think that the Muloh is like, nobody knew about things actually they did but they were just sleeping somewhere you know? <laughs> they were just sleeping somewhere and um, all the kids came in and after that we had more and more art events um, which related to books and then we had book readings we had um, poetry readings we even had film uh, screenings so it went on from there you know from one to another from just a bookstore with a cafe to a bookstore with events and where people could congregate and discuss issues. We also had like Freedom Film Fest. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. Uh, Freedom Film Fest, they, they make films um, um, about the daily lives of uh, people, um, especially downtrodden. And then you can discuss those films. So mm. we've actually had the screenings a few times. So, um, so I'm pretty much happy the way things um, were moving. Mm. The challenges uh, were at the start. Now we have, we face different challenges every day. Yeah, uh, especially you when can't you get too so many events, like relax about different? things. Yeah? Yeah. So sorry, uh, when, when sorry again? When during the MTO, like obviously there were going to be less, almost no events. Was there a demand for yes, no sales? events. Correct. No events. In fact, I closed down the the place for the whole time. Totally, we were only selling books online. That's that's all we could do. Mm. Um, some I saw that some bookstores were having um, online events, um, Zoom events to discuss books and all that. Um, no, but I decided not to. I just decided to wait and see and just hold hold through. Um, by the time um, we were able to go back, you know, and work, um, there were a lot of people who were waiting to actually buy books to, because they haven't been in touch with books or something like that. They just wanted a place to sit down again and, mm. and read. Um, so then we're back 
you know, back in business kind of thing. But um, I would say that during the MCO, online online sales was important. Mm. Just to keep things going, you know. It's not it's not the easiest during MCO. Mm. Especially if you're into physical presence. Yeah. Did you feel like your skills as a lawyer, in a sense, is there like skills that you could use as like an entrepreneur now? Mm, it's a different thing altogether. Definitely different. I felt a bit funny at the start um, when, um, you know, I decided to join um, book bazaars. They had a secondhand book bazaars in Bangi. I, that was the first that I joined. Then I went for a few in Penang. It felt funny um, sitting behind the table and trying to push books to people. I was like, um, I'm not used to this, you know. Mm. But um, then I realized that if I just talk about the things that I like, it was just enough. And because I love books, so I just talk about them. So everyone comes near to the table and they ask, what, what is this about? And I could just go on and on and on about those books. And I found that Oh, you know, I really enjoyed that and and they got more information from me from just talking to me. And so I found that that's important. You really need to know the product that you're selling. Mm. You know, and even if you don't sell it, you feel good about telling someone about it. <laughs> yeah, especially if you want to market some your product that you really believe in. I'm sure you that really makes it very easy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if, um, if someone were to ask me, oh, I think I want to sell something. Do you think selling books is... Is um, uh, is okay? I would say, do you read books? Do you love it? You know, that's the first thing that I would mm. ask. Um, do you know um, what kind of books there are out in the market? Mm. Um, do you follow what's there? Do you know what people don't like to read? Um, or do you know, basically, do you know what you're selling? So that's very important for all products and especially for books. Interesting. So were there any like new skills that you had to learn, especially to become a Taokei now? Definitely. Uh, I would say there was a lot that I had to learn from the young people, which was um, manga. Manga? I, manga. Have you heard of manga before? Yes. Yeah, okay. And um, during my time, I was just playing comics, DC Marvel. Okay, DC Marvel and all those kind of things. Um, I would read. Uh, my cousin's comics and all that. But um, this is the age of manga. And so when I went to Japan, I actually went to a manga fest. And I was shocked to see everyone, you know, in all those costumes. And and Japan had, in, it was a Kyoto manga fest. And the, there was all sorts of comics, all sorts I've never seen in Malaysia. Um, of course, they were in Japanese, but um, the idea is that it's such a big market of in, over there. And I went to one bookstore which had manga from the first floor to the fifth floor, all different types of um, of um, titles, which mm. I've really never seen before. Um, I decided then to take some back to Malaysia and see how it went. Um, only the translated ones, those translated to English. And actually, they're quite expensive, uh, comparable to those which were translated to Malay um, and sold like Doraemon. If you've heard of Doraemon, uh, they're published by Tora Aman. I think it's a local company. And there were a few others, but they didn't sustain. Mm. Um, I saw that um, after a while, they closed down because the price Mm. They were selling it for maybe around three ringgit fifty, four ringgit fifty, but um, to publish, um, keep on publishing at such a cheap price, I don't think uh, they could sustain it. Yeah. And so they closed doors, which was sad for those who really like to read cheap manga in a sense, and those manga readers went to e, you know, the e comics, the e manga. I'm not sure whether uh, they really enjoy it, but mm. I still. See um, a lot of kids come into my bookstore to read physical manga. You know, um, and to actually go through those physical manga to read and touch. 
um, so I, I can see that they 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 really need to touch the books mm. to enjoy it. So I do have a lot of manga as well in our free reading section. I bought some extras and put it there so that the mm. kids can actually read them. Not all manga is for children, mind you. Yeah. Um, there are some manga which are, so we're quite careful about that. Um, I think the Japanese were quite good of writing at the back plus 18 yeah. or for 18 and above. Yeah. So at least um, we steal those away from the younger kids. Uh, so sorry to cut you short, Serena. We're almost running out of time. We want the audience to have time to ask their questions as well. Yeah, sorry. Sure. Um, but moving on to the next question would be about like, do you have any other challenges that you face like right now during um, the RMCO or in some places CMCO now for your, for your bookstore? Yeah, I think it's just the same during the MCO. Uh, mm. We just have to manage um, with having the, the store open and you know, um, online. We just have to keep on doing that. Um, but soon I think um, the reader's habits will change and we will have to be ready for that. And uh, what ways do you do to like prepare yourself for that new change of reader's trends? Yeah, okay. Um, a lot of people say that we have to go E for everything. Mm. Um, a lot of people say that um, this is the internet age, that everything will have to go there towards that. But I still think that um, as long as we can have the physical presence and what we want is readers to actually feel what they're reading, it is still the physical book that we want them to have. And so instead of E, still people still want to buy and that's why the online bookstore is very important. Uh, online bookstore and I think reviews of books are also very important now. They, um, they might know about a certain book, um, but having reviews about the book do help. So the things like Goodreads, Goodreads are actually a good start you know, to go through for mm. those who want to read books. But those hardcore, I don't think they actually look at Goodreads. They actually just go through the title Agreed. and just feel it coming, you know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on to my last question, which is, do you think young people should start their own business? And why, why not? Okay. If they want to start their own business, um, firstly, for a bookstore, um, you need some capital if you really want a physical bookstore. Um, you have to pay rent. Um, you've got to pay the staff if you're not doing it on your own. You got to renovate. You have to have all the capital expenditure. Mm. Um, so, for if you want to start off, um, you can start off. I've seen a lot of people start off um, with a, just an online bookstore, or they participate in bazaars. They go to the bazaars, they bring the books, and then they just go. Um, I've seen them go to universities, sell open table at the universities, and sell those. I've seen young people do that as a start. And then when they think they're confident enough, then only they open a physical bookstore. So I think um, that's um, uh, quite a quite an easy way to go through, so that you don't put too much money in capital, you know, put too much capital in it first, yeah. and see how it goes for you. Do you think people in general, I mean, like young people in general, should start any kind of business, like at oh, that definitely. Age? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I I believe. Um, uh, if, you're, if you start your own business, you can be independent. Um, but I think you should always start to have some um, uh, experience working for someone mm. and see how they run it. And then go into your own business, not just jump into it straight away um, so that you can see it from two perspectives. Not to say that you might not be able to, no, but to see from the perspective of someone who works for an employer and for someone to be an employer um, if you're having workers. But if you're going to do it on your own, that's fine. You can just go and um, do it. But whatever it is, love, what, love the product. You must like the product. You must want the product. Mm. If you can't even like your own product, don't even think about selling it to someone else. Yeah, it's very important to believe in your product. Uh, okay, we will move on to the Q&A session. Um, someone in the registration form asked to Serena, 
in the age of digitalization, how does your business set itself apart from ebooks or online libraries? Okay, so um, I still believe that we need um, physical books, mm. uh, not just ebooks. I know that a lot of people have talked about this. Um, in America, it, what, at one time, um, the, the introduction of ebooks did you know, bring down some business, book business over there. But after a while, it just went plateau and then it just came back because um, people realized that um, reading an ebook and reading a physical book is just not the same. It's just like um, going to England or watching England from far, right? <laughs> so, what? How? How? How do you think? You know, definitely you want to go okay. there, right? <laughs> Rather than just watch it from TV, you know, you know from inside a book or you know, just um, looking at pictures, right? Mm. So it's I would say it's equivalent to that. You might like to look at it once in a while, like look at just read an ebook, but touching a book, keeping in a book has a different feel altogether. But you must like to read. If you really love to read, you would want the book. It's diff very different from people who just wanna wanna know about something and that's it. They just wanna browse. People who wanna buy a, a, an ebook uh, love to just browse, find just a few details and just move on. We understand that. But people who really wanna own, people who really wanna read. People who really want to enjoy the book um, would still want to buy the physical item. Mm. Is there a way your um, bacha, in a sense, try to educate the people or your your customers to encourage them to go buy more physical books? Um, well, we do sometimes. But that's why I go to bazaars and try mm -hmm. to talk to people. We educate them through just having a chat about the book. I sometimes go to schools. We have events in schools where we just try to introduce certain books to children. Um, books from yesteryears um, too, so that they know the kind of books that were being read by, you know, people, the, the people from um, uh, in the 1800s or the 1900s. Um, in fact, now I'm introducing Hikayat Abdullah to some of my own students. Um, whereas you know, perhaps in normal schools, they don't exactly learn about that now, right? So we're just introducing books. And once they know about these books, they are eager to find out more. And, and that's when um, the interest is, um, is started. Mm, Thank you for answering that question. Uh, we'll move on to the next question. Pui asked in the chat box, uh, she asked, Hi, Serena, as I believe that nowadays many people like to read ebooks. Maybe because of ebook is more cheaper. So may I know how Serena can maintain the profit of the Bacha bookstore? Okay. So as I mentioned, um, the kind of people who come in um, are also actual book readers and collectors. Um, I actually have another service called Book Hunting. And I find there are a lot of people who actually come and ask for books which they just cannot find. They've heard about things, uh, about a certain book, or they've tried to look for a certain book, they just can't find it because it's just low in print. Um, so they actually ask us to actually go hunt for the book. So that's one service that I have uh, been doing for quite you know, a number of years. Um, you'll be surprised how many people are looking for books that they can't find. Um, perhaps those are books which are very low in print because the publishers don't want to spend too much. Let's say they usually print out 100,000 books and they decided that, uh, you know, we might not be able to sell 100,000. So we'll just print 20,000. The cost is higher, but what makes it um, a bit more difficult to find is that there's only 20,000 going around the world. So if, if the book is good, uh, they might go for a reprint, but if they don't, that's when you know, uh, it's something that needs to be hunted for. Um, so if you're looking at ebooks, um, I'm not surprised that people are looking at it because as I said, it's easy. You can just look it up in your phone. I do that sometimes myself. Um, you can just look up a PDF copy of it and just go with it. Um, but to be honest, I use it because I don't want to touch my, my delicate book. <laughs> Uh, because I don't want finger stains. <laughs> Sometimes I don't want that. 
um, I used to um, read a book while eating biscuits and all that, right? And it stains the books a lot. Um, to be honest, that's quite nice. Thinking if you're um, 50 years down the line, you look at the book and you see, oh, that's a coffee stain there <laughs> um, that I, I spilled in 1978 or something like that, right? And uh, or you, you have those kind of things, but sometimes you just get like, oh, you know, I don't want to spoil my book. I don't want something bad to happen to it. So you actually put it aside and read, read a PDF version. So you have to, and I know a lot of book um, collectors who are like that. They mm. buy the book, keep it, read it once, keep it very nicely wrapped in their cupboard. And then buy e if they want to read it again, they go and look for the ebook. Yeah, I think there's definitely a pros and cons and kind of like a debate like between physical and ebooks. But also I, I find it very interesting how you say like you that in the sense you diversify your services, like you don't only sell books, but you give like services like book hunting, even like whole events for authors and so on. So it's very interesting. So I think thank you, Puyi, and the um the other participant who asked a question. And thank you, Serena, for sharing your story and answering our questions. Um, we hope that for My everyone, pleasure. we hope that for everyone who is attending for today, you feel motivated by Serena for how she, uh, in a sense, although she come from different backgrounds, she still have that passion for books. And from that, that passion, she have that uh, belief in her products and able to market her products and find other ways to, to make profit while doing something that you love. So I hope everyone will feel motivated by today's session and feel um, to feel motivated to work hard and achieve your life goals in life. So um, if your goal is to start a business or maybe you want to learn a little bit about entrepreneurship, RISE is organizing an online course which is called RISE Online and it's free for anyone to join but specifically for Malaysian who are aged uh, 18 to 25, we have seed funding for you if you join our course and finish a few um, assignments for us. So the course is very easy. It's a very short, meaningful video lesson, and it's most importantly free. We hope that um, anyone can finish it at their own time. And you can find out more at bit.ly slash rise online. If you uh, enjoyed today's talkie talks and want to find out more for about other talkies, we have our next talkie talks, which is Michelle from Creators Hub, which is a digital agency. So you can uh, sign up. It's not you can still sign up for today. It will close tomorrow. It is uh, on this Friday at 8 p.m. And it's going to be English as well. So uh, next, please. Yeah, if you want to find out about our previous talking talks or other programs that RISE have, you can find out on our Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and also our website. Thank you very much, Serena, for joining us for today. Really hope Thank you. Um, to get to visit your bookstore one day, I hope. Please do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye.